Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started with the score slide. So welcome again to everybody who's joining us for this session. We're pleased that you are interested in spending an hour to learn something about Google. And uh, we have our one of our favorite presenters with us tonight, Lindsay Sims McKee. So um, it's bound to be a great session. But first, I'd like to give you some information about SCORE. Um, SCORE is the largest network of free volunteer small business mentors in, in the country. And so we believe that no matter what stage your business is, that we can find a mentor for you. So we have over 10,000 mentors across the country, and we have access to all of them via the internet. And so if we have, um, if you have an interesting business that we can't find a mentor in Cleveland, we can certainly reach out across the country to find somebody who would fit um, as a mentor for you. Our mission is to foster vibrant small business communities. We do this through mentoring and education. We hope that you as a small business owner will have the support that you need to be successful. Uh, we know that small businesses drive our economy, uh, particularly in the Cleveland area. In the last year or so, the downtown area has blossomed because of small businesses. So we thank you for being a small business owner and uh, hope that we can help you be more successful. These are some statistics from our last full year. Uh, if you notice at the bottom, we cover seven counties right along Lake Erie. Uh, we've just added another one, Trumbull County. So uh, we have a huge population that we serve. Our services are free, partially because of the Small Business Administration that supports part of our budget. And also, the support from a lot of businesses in Cleveland that want to be um, want to help small businesses succeed. So we're very pleased to have that support, and we're happy that we can provide you services at no charge. This is a, a snapshot of our website. If you go there, you can actually look at the profiles of our local mentors and choose a mentor if you want, or you can ask us to choose one for you that will match your interests. We do have a list of all our upcoming webinars that are live, along with a huge number of recorded webinars. So you can go at your leisure and browse through them and uh, view all of them uh, multiple times if you wish. There are a lot of other resources. There are templates for business plans, marketing plans, et cetera. So when you get a chance, go to our website, take a look at, at it, and do take advantage of it. And I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay. Welcome, Lindsay. Uh, we're delighted to have you and hi, hi. for what you have to say. Hello, hello, everyone. I am so grateful. Thank you so much, Anita, uh, for the introduction. And for everyone, I'm very grateful to have be here this e be here with you this evening. And what I want you guys to do is the same thing I ask in every single one of the workshops. I want you to use the chat to tell me who you are. So if you can, in the chat, who you are, where you're from, and what your business is. If you've been here before, I see many, many of a familiar name. And so I know several of you have been here before. And so if you've been here before, you understand what I like to do, which is to use your businesses as real examples. And so if you put who you are, where you're from, what your business is in the chat, that gives me a much better opportunity to actually leverage that information to share real options, real things that you can do, real ways that you can do ads for your business. Because I really strongly believe that we should be like, doing the thing, not just learning about the thing. So because I want you to do the thing 
here we go. You guys tell me information and then I will help you do the thing. Okay, good, good, good. You guys are giving it to me. This is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And with that, I'm going to drag my drag the chat over so that I can actually see you guys. Hello, Jill from Oberlin. Um, yeah, keep it coming. We got East Moline. We got, uh, where else are you guys from? Carolyn, New London, uh, Michigan. So yeah, tell me all of your, where you are and what your business is, Bath Township, because again, I use that information as we're going forward. So clothing retailer, Kiana, I'm really excited about you getting your business started. I know Kiana's been here learning all she can. Shelly from Carthage. I'm actually from St. Louis. And so I'm familiar with Carthage. It's not that, well, I mean, it's Missouri. It, I feel like nothing's that far, far from St. Louis. Like you can drive to the other side of the state in three hours. So <laughs> That, that's me. I'm like, yeah, it's not that far. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get us started. And thank you again, you guys, for putting all your information in there. It really makes like a difference because I can look. I'm already getting ideas about things that Belinda can do with the stuff that I'm going to talk about. So we're going to jump into it, okay? So if you haven't yet, don't worry about it. Put your information in the chat. And if at any point you have a question, I have two screens up. On my, my left side, I'm looking at the chat. So if you guys have questions throughout the workshops, feel free to put your information, your question in the chat. Um, you can also use the Q&A if you want it to just go to like me. That's fine. I see that as well. I prefer the chat so that anybody can kind of get an idea of what it is you're interested in. Hey, Shanisha. Um, and if you have something that is very specific to you, I, again, these types of things you think, oh, well, I'm the only one here with a maid service. So this is going to be specific to me, except for that I will be able to show you how exact how that information will be useful to other people as well. So whatever you got, put it in the chat and I am here to help. So who am I? I'm Lindsay. Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, I am your Grow with Google digital coach. I am the Grow with Google digital coach for the entire state of Ohio. But I always like to say, whoever you are here personally, I am your Grow with Google coach today in this moment. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of a business called Predictable Results Marketing. I'm working on several other things because I'm a busybody, y'all. I'm one of those people who can't stop working. I'm not addicted or anything. I've had people ask me, are you a workaholic? My little sister, she's 15. Are you a workaholic? And I'm like, no, I just enjoy it. <laughs> so I can stop. I can take a break. I've been on vacation. Uh, it's just, I really like working. <laughs> so, so let's talk about ads because I'm not that important, but your businesses and your ads are. So why are ads important? Not just any ads, but specifically Google ads. Now, normally under every other workshop option, I am very, very clear. I am not trying to sell you anything. I am also not trying to sell you anything right now, but usually I have like a bunch of options for you, including Google and a bunch of other things. But today we're going to talk about Google ads and we're going to talk about them for a specific reason. And that's because 49% of shoppers survey say that they use Google to discover new products and services. 55% say that they use Google to make purchase decisions. And I would even, as I always say, I'm betting these numbers are low because a lot of people don't even think about the fact that they're using Google to get these answers. They just type in something into a search bar on their phone and that search is powered by Google and they're just not thinking about it. Or they're looking it up on YouTube and guess what YouTube is? Well, it's, it's Google. And so if you are in that space where you're using Google often and not even thinking about it. Just imagine how many people are doing that who responded to this survey, okay? 50% plus, that's the number you need to know, of people are using Google to find new things. And then 50% plus people are making their decisions based on what they find. And so what you want to do is think about how can you leverage that fact for your business? How can you get found very specifically when someone is looking on Google. So again, I rarely make a thing that's like specific to one platform, but in this case, it's very specific. Online advertising, specifically Google advertising, gives you the ability to reach specific audiences through specific channels and then see exactly what your results are. 
it is a very, very, very transparent system. And so we're going to talk about that system. We're going to talk about how to get started. I'm going to actually open up Google Ads. We'll talk about how to use it for a variety of different types of businesses. Because, um, you know, as I like to say, I'm, I'm very much interested in making sure that we can get you guys the help that you need. So how does Google Ads work exactly? First things first, it starts with a search query. And then in the background, while that search query is happening, Google is creating a set of results. Included in those results potentially are advertisers. Now, not every search query has someone bidding for ads for that word, right? Not every search term has somebody bidding for it. But a lot of the stuff that you guys do here absolutely has people bidding for that. So I'm going to look at uh, Kusha Lee. So if you have people, you're starting a new restaurant, people are often, matter of fact, right now at this exact moment, or maybe an hour ago, people are looking for places nearby to eat dinner. They're looking for options. They're looking for availability. They're looking for something new. And they're going to type something into Google. Sometimes, especially if they're not local to an area, the thing that they're going to type in is restaurants near me. Now, if you are looking for restaurants near you, that's what you're going to type into Google. And that is what's going to start that bidding process. As soon as I hit the enter button, actually, it's already started before I even hit the enter button. And so what we want to do is be in the process when someone is typing that search in, we want to make sure our restaurant, our services are the ones that are coming up. Okay. So that's what this entire conversation is about. Now, all of you who understand that when I say there's like a bidding or an auction in the background, a bunch of you know what that means. And a lot of you don't. What that means is that in the background, in the split second between me typing in the words and the, the page loading, there is a competition in the background. And that competition is to see who is going to rank first for ads, meaning what's the first ad that's going to come up. Uh, and then basically like who gets that first, second, third position. There are positions further down the page. If there is a map who shows up first on the map, things of that nature. That's what the bidding is all about. But just so that we're clear, bidding with this, this competition, I like to use the word competition because it's more accurate to me. The competition isn't just about money. Otherwise it wouldn't be called a competition. So you don't just win because you threw more money at it. There's a bunch of things. It's based on the quality, the context, and whether or not this is going to serve up what someone wants. Let's go back to that restaurants example. So I got restaurants near me. There are people who have restaurants who are not open right now. It is 7.15. If I am searching for restaurants near me at 7.15 p.m. or at any given point in time, can you guys tell me in the chat, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? If I'm searching for restaurants near me, what am I looking for? Dinner. Thank you, Lisa. I'm not looking for ideas. I'm looking for dinner. And so the reason why I say it matters a lot more than just money, context, because there's somebody running an ad that isn't open right now. Their business isn't even open. And so if I click this enter button, there's a possibility that someone is running an ad for a business. There's a local uh, Egyptian restaurant down the street. They close at like 3 p.m. If they're running advertising, should they show up right now when I'm looking for dinner at 5 p.m.? No, right? Or 7 p.m.? I don't know what time it is. At 7? <laughs> no, they shouldn't show up because it's not the right context. And so even if they bid a ton of money right now, it is very unlikely that Google is going to show their ad because Google has enough information to see that that business is currently closed. And so they know I'm looking for someone who's open. They're not necessarily going to show that. Now, it might show up in organic search. That's a totally different thing. We'll talk about that too. But the bid is not going to be won by a business that isn't even open right now, right? So that's what I mean by context because Google doesn't want to give us bad answers. Their game is to try to win right? They're not trying to give you a bad answer because if they give you a business that's closed right now, 
what is that going to do? It's going to make you have a bad taste in your mouth for Google. Like you're going to be like, oh, Google gives me bad answers. And we all know Google does not give bad answers. <laughs> and so because of that, what that means is that they care a lot about the context of what someone is typing in. Now, this workshop, there's a lot of ads out there. This one is going to focus on a thing called pay per click. What does that mean? It means for you all personally. So for Gwendolyn's business, she could put in a Google ad for beadwork, for artisan beadwork, right? So she puts in that Google ad for, I'm guessing she makes jewelry or other beaded things. You can tell me more about what you do, Gwendolyn. So beaded work, she could be making dresses, she could, there's hats, there's any number of things you can make with beads. And so, or she could just be selling the beads, I don't know. But whatever it is, if someone is typing that search in, the only time Gwen would pay is if someone clicked on her ad. So if you just see the ad, we don't pay at all. But if I click on it, then is when I pay, right? So let me use the example that I have in here, restaurants near me, and I'm going to hit enter. Now I have a list of restaurants here. These are organic options. These are not being paid. They're just here on the map. If this were a pay per click situation and I clicked on Burntwood Tavern, I would be char essentially, I would be causing Burtonwood Tavern to need to pay money for that click. That is what pay per click means. But if I don't click on it because I'm not interested in that restaurant, I want to click on something else, then the thing that I click on, if it's an ad, then they pay. So you only pay when a user, person who, who is doing the search, actually clicks on your ad. This is really good for us as small businesses because it means that we're not paying for eyeballs. We're only paying for action. You're only paying when someone does something. You're not paying just to show up. Now, you can have your ads appear in a bunch of other places, but a lot of those ads will still be pay per click. When they show up, it'll have a picture, it'll have your description, but it will still be pay per click. It will not make it a different type of ad, it will still be a pay-per-click ad. Now, how do we get started with Google Ads? The very first thing you need to do is go to google.com slash ads. And I will tell you, or you can do what I say, ads.google, enter. <laughs> so if you go to ads.google or ads.google.com, you will get Google Ads. It's going to take 90 years to show up. I'll type it in the straight way. Okay, google.com slash ads. As see, you see, it just showed up right there. So what I'm going to warn you about is the same thing I warn everybody about. When you go to do Google ads, you'll see up here in the corner, you see my little face right there. That's my business profile. I have a different picture. I'm just having an epiphany, you guys. This is going to be so helpful for you. So I have a different picture for every single one of my accounts so that I know which account it is just by glancing at the picture. They're all pictures of me. It's just that they're different pictures of me. So I know which ones are which. And this is my PRM, my business profile. Now, I have multiple ad accounts underneath that profile, but I also have a digital coaches program uh, profile and I have a private one under my um, personal email address. And I've actually run ads for various people under various email addresses. But why am I bringing all of this up? One of the things that people say to me on a regular basis, Mary, no, I'll get to that question in a second. So no, the answer to your question is no. <laughs> one of the questions that I get from people all the time is, I lost my Google, Google took away my ads account. Where did it go? Why would they do that? They, you know, like they did, they'll just say it disappeared one day, it was there and one day it wasn't. The answer to that is never truly that it disappeared. If you, Google is going to take away your ads account, they will send you 85 warnings. If you get a suspension or if your ads account expires or if the card that's on your account um, gets declined. All of those things warrant an email. If you, if any, there is no circumstance under which Google is just going to take your stuff away and not tell you about it first. So usually when someone says that, it's because they signed in under one email address. And then when they went to go look for their ads, they signed in under a different email address. So the answer is whatever email address you're using for your Google products, whether it's Google Analytics, Google Ads, any of them, I don't care what account it is, YouTube, whatever one it is that's a Google 
thing that you're doing for your business. Use the same email address for everything. Do not switch back and forth between your business email and your personal email. If you have your Google business profile, you don't want to have that and then that under one email address and then have your YouTube channel under another email address and then have your Google ads on a different email address. Keep them all under the same email address because if you do them under different ones, the likelihood that you're going to quote unquote lose your account is really high. And then pro tip, because I can see a lot of you in here are side hustlers. A lot of people said, you know, I'm starting up a fill in the blank business, which indicates to me that you probably have a full time job. Do not start your Google accounts with your work email. It doesn't matter how stable that work environment is. You do not want to do that because if anything happens to that work email, you will lose access to everything. Everything that you've done, you will lose access to it. So do not use a work or better yet, just don't use someone else's. If you could work, if you go to school somewhere and they gave you an email address and it uses a Google, um, you know, Google workspace, don't use that email address. Just do not use someone else's email address to do anything business related because as soon as that email address goes away, you lose access to that account. Now, Mary's question is, do you need a Google Workspace uh, account in order to do Google Ads? And the answer is absolutely not. You do not by any means need to pay for an email address in order to do Google Ads. That is absolutely unnecessary. You can use your plain old fashioned Gmail address. Just make sure that you're using the same one every time. We do not want to use a different one every time. It's just, it doesn't work, right? Just not something we are interested in doing. So I am going to go ahead and sign in. I'm going to switch accounts and sign in because I don't want to sign in under one of my client accounts. Uh, so it still wants me to sign in under one of my client accounts. Um, so I'm going to do new create new and just go and do a new one so that it's it's brand new. Uh, so the first thing it wants you to do when you start up is to create your first campaign. And it's going to create your first campaign in basic setup mode. So I'm going to hit create my first campaign. If you want to follow along with me, I am more than happy for you guys to do that. Um, as Anita mentioned, this is also playing on YouTube. Hey, people on YouTube, if you're watching, um, this is also playing on YouTube. So if you want to go back and watch this as soon as it's over and then follow along, that also works. So you're going to hit create your first account. And then in here, it populated one of the accounts that I have um, for a Google business profile. But I'm going to delete that and I'm going to actually use... One of my friends here, I know you're not my friend for real, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you my friend today, uh, <laughs> Shanisha's business. And then you can enter a web address. I'm not going to enter into a web address. Now, the reason I'm not going to enter a web address, it's going to come up in a second. I want you guys to see this. So I'm going to put, and I know it's the, sorry, Shanisha, it's the made experience. And I'm going to hit next. Now, what it wants me to do, and the reason why it's even thinking really hard, is that it wants me to link up my account. Now, this is the reason why you want to make sure you're using the same email address for all of the stuff you're doing. The same one. Because as you see here, it's like, do you want to link YouTube? Do you want to link a merchant center? Do you want to link your Google business profile? Do you want to link a phone number? It is asking me all of this because if I link these accounts to my Google ads, that means that I can run Google, I can run YouTube ads even easier. I can run shopping ads even easier. I can It'll connect my Google profile information so it'll know when my business is open. It'll be able to share any of the information that's on my Google business profile with someone who's clicking on my ad. So it's very, very useful, but it's asking me if I want to link all of those things. But as you can see, it's populating based on the email address I used to sign in. So if I used an email address that was disconnected from everything, it wouldn't have all of these links available for me to connect. It would have the option, but none of that automatic, like filling it in of who it is, it wouldn't have any of that. And so what we really want is to make sure that we are keeping it simple and that we are using the same account so that we can get the same result. So then the next thing it's going to ask me is what do I want to happen with this ad? What is the goal of this ad? So let me jump back over here to the business name. So the first thing it asks is what's your business name? And then it wants a page URL. So it already asked me for that earlier. I didn't give it one on purpose. 
The reason why is because you do not want this to be your website's homepage. So let me go to Shanice's website real quick. Shanisha, can you type your web address in the chat? I could probably just Google you, but chance, I want, I want to, I don't want to risk not getting it right. So there we go. She's she's quick on the draw. You don't mind me using you as an example, do you, Shanisha? <laughs> I hope not, because I'm going ahead. <laughs> I've moved forward. Oh no. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a Google. This happens all the time. So the maid experience and oh, oh, I see what's happening. Uh, Shanisha, this is a completely unintentional but purposefully awesome advice moment. The Elementor, uh, the Elementor plugin that you have on your website needs to be uninstalled and reinstalled. It's causing this error. That's what it is. Y'all, WordPress is evil. Not in a bad way. Like, I mean, I'm sure they're lovely in real life, but they cause all sorts of problems for us as small businesses. <laughs> Okay, so the reason why I wanted to use Shanisha was it was for a very specific reason. So I'm going to actually just type in made services and see what I can come up with. I got Mary Maids, Care Source, all these. So mind you, Mary Maids, just so the work clear, this is a ad. So this ad has all this like services and all that. A lot of that is populated because of the way that they put that information in. When I said you can link all the different things. They link all the different things, then Google can populate more information into their ad. Just say it. I'm not going to click on this ad because I don't want to cost those people money. Uh, and then care.com has an ad. Home Aglow has an ad. And then I have the Maids of Northeast Ohio. I'm going to go to Cardinal Maids. I never like to click on the first one. I'm just a little special like that. Now, with Cardinal Maids, the reason why I pulled up a maid service is this. I want to, oh, Belinda was like, do me. I'll do you in a second, Belinda. Uh, so the reason why I pulled up a maid service is because we have a bunch of options, right? The gift cards option, you can have maid and cleaning services. There's different types of services available. When you are starting your ad and it asks you where you want the ad to go, you do not want to send people to the home page of your website because if they land here, they don't know what to do. People are very delightfully and amazingly stupid. And what I mean by that is not other people. I mean you too. I mean me too. I mean all the people. We are all dumb. We are all dumb and we have very, very short attention spans. And so if you send me to your homepage, what if per chance I don't know what I want, right? So I don't know what kind of maid service it is that I want. And so if I go to the homepage, I might, I might browse around for a minute, but am I going to order anything? Probably not. The longer it takes me to figure out what I want to do, the, le the less likely I am to execute. So you don't want to send people to a homepage. You want to send them to a specific thing. And then you want your ad goal to align with what it is that you are trying to get to happen. OK, so you want your ad goal to align to what you're trying to get to happen. So let me I'm going to go ahead and use Belinda's website since she dropped it in. Belinda was like, I'm going I'm going to take a chance. Maybe you'll use me. So we have Little Jim. This is a really great another great business locally here in Highland Heights. And the Little Jim website has classes. They have gym hours. They have camps. They have parties. All of these different options. Now, if you were going to run a Google ad, you would want to run it for one of these things and maybe even something even more specific like kids' birthday parties. So you would run your ad specifically for kids' birthday parties and you would send people directly to this page instead of sending them to your homepage, which has a lot of information, but not necessarily the information that you need, okay? That is the reason why we want to be very specific. We don't just want to put any old link in there. We want to put a link that is to the exact thing that we are advertising. Remember earlier when I said context is key. You do not want to run a general ad because general, hi, my name is, you know, little Jim, get to know me. That's too broad. Most people are not searching for anything anything. They're looking for something specific. And so the more specific you can get, the better. 
Now, what's going to happen when you put that landing page in there? We call it a landing page because it is the page of your website that someone is going to land on. And that landing page is literally it's just the place you're sending them. What Google is going to do is they are actually going to go through and read this page with the, you know, spiders, not with their actual eyeballs. They're going to read this page and they're going to pull together some ideas around what this page could be about. And so right now I'm seeing that this is a, like, you can actually just straight book a party, right? You can book a party with the guest of honors information, the parents information, the date, all of that jazz right here. So because the add a theme, book a party, there's the uh, 15 guests, $300. I might say that for this, I want page views. I want more people to come and click on this page. Now I'm going to select the URL for this and I'm going to add it in here. Add it in. Sorry, clicking all the buttons but the right ones. No. Oh, it's it still thinks I'm doing the Bickford thing. I have to go back and go to the business thing. Um, but anyway, so I would add the URL in here and I would add in, again, just this one specific URL. You do not want to have it be the entire URL for your business, just to your homepage. You want it to be a specific page, okay? So I'm going to hit next, and then it's going to give me a lot of options. It's going to say, what do you want your ad to be optimized for? This is amazing, you guys. This is There's a reason why I like to use, like, do this live with you, is that I want you to see kind of what it is that actually happens in the ad. So since I have my final URL spot, I'm gonna type in the little gym. Now what it's gonna do is with that information, it's gonna start trying to figure out what this, what this ad should be about. Now that I have given it a link, it's going to start trying to figure out what images and things like that I should use. And it can be optimized completely by AI directly into the platform. So I hope, again, that you guys are following along with it can be very simple. They'll give you a little preview and then it'll keep moving. You would, like I said, select what type of ad you want to run. The image on this screen is clearly a little dated because the ad platform has been updated since 2024 and it is only like 32 days into the month or into the year. What year? What day is it? The 6, 37, 38 days into the year. So, you know, it, it's a little bit dated on the, the literal look of this, but you guys saw what it looked like before. There was a list of options and you get to choose what your advertising goal is. You have a lot of options to choose from. You can decide you want to do a video ad. You can decide you want to do um, an ad for brand awareness. The beautiful thing about this nowadays is that even, you know, oh, see, it already pulled in some images from the website. These types of ads that we're doing here, they're going to give us a lot of versatility because Google is essentially saying, create this ad and we will maximize this campaign for you. We will make sure that you get seen as many places as much as possible with the campaign that you're trying to create, right? Like that is the entire idea. Um, how long has Google Ads been using AI? Actually, Mary, it's been literally years. Like it's been around for a while uh, because, well, Google, I don't know, most people don't realize this, but ChatGPT, the system, the GPT and ChatGPT was created by Google. Uh, <laughs> like, so there's that. <laughs> the literal GPT was created by Google. It was just open. They open they open sourced it so anyone could use it. And then when they did that, the the makers of Chat GPT um, this like have been working on it for years to actually get a generative AI going based on a multi. I'm not going to go into details. It's been around for a while. So when it says write your ad again, as you see here. I don't really have to write it so much as I have to start get like thinking about what I want. And it automatically, based on the website, local kids' birthday parties, it's got um, Highland Heights, find little gym near you, kids' gymnastics, little gym locations. You see what we're talking about here is automatically giving me options based on the page I put in. Now, if I put in... Uh, the homepage for Belinda, just littlegym.com slash Highland Heights. Like if that's all I put in, then it would be very generic. This ad set would not be nearly as specific. So now when someone is literally looking for a local kid's birthday party, 
they might find Belinda. And that's what we want. We don't want to try to just capture all people anywhere ever, period. Right? We want to capture the people who are looking for a local kid's birthday party venue, right? That's what we want to look for. Um, how many ads translate into purchases? Lisa, that is a very ad campaign specific question. And the good thing is that every single ad campaign is you get as many stats as they're available, you get for your ad campaign. And so if you're asking, is there an average? No. Why? Because some people do really good with context. So this thing that I'm teaching you right now about making it specific to birthday parties and then having that be the landing page and then having all the content in the ads be about birthday parties, most people don't do that. And so their ads are going to have poor performance because people they're gonna people are gonna be typing in something specific and getting their generic landing page. They'll click on it and then not ever follow through because they got lost. Like I said, they got distracted. They clicked on too many things and they never made a decision. If you send people directly to the one thing that they're looking for, you have a significantly higher likelihood of them converting, especially if they are already in a purchasing mode, right? So if I'm already thinking I need to reserve a spot for my kid's birthday party, I type this in, I see little Jim, I am significantly more likely to actually book because I know that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Versus if I am looking for kids entertainment and a little gym comes up, I don't know if I'm going to click on that or not, because yes, it's entertaining. Is it specific? Maybe. Is it exactly what I was looking for? I don't know. Like the more you can get specific to what someone's actually looking for, the better. So you don't want to do big generic ads. You always want to get very specific. I hope that answers your question. So no, there is no average, but only because some people are really bad at making ads. <laughs> like, a, and the good thing in a way is that if you are really bad at making ads, the good thing about pay-per-click is that if your ad sucks, no one's going to click on it. And you're not going to waste a ton of money because Google is not one of those platforms that just takes your money. So if you put in a budget of $150 and no one clicks on your ad, you will spend $0. That is literally exactly how it works. And yes, I have run campaigns like that where I made a very conservative platform, like I made a very specific ask, very specific keywords, set it up for a specific region. No one clicked on the ad. You spent zero dollars, learned a lot about those words. That was it. You don't, it, it's it's very simple. It's not a waste of money because you only get clicks when people actually want to look at the thing based on what they asked for. So you have the option in here to do longer headlines. You have a description. All of these things, like I said, are optimized for you by AI. So you don't really even have to think too hard about what it is that you want them to say. Now, I've already kind of done a bunch of little adding in one business over here and one business over there. So you guys are seeing a bunch of different options. But what you want to know is that when you do this with your one ad account, essentially, you're going to get the same information for your one business populating all the way through this. So it's not going to look like mine where you see like four different business names popping up. That's just me being silly, like showing a bunch of different businesses as options. You will only get your one. So if all of your accounts are under different email addresses, can you change them? Yes, Shanisha's asking that question. You can, you can and you should. So you should centralize all of your business accounts under one email address. Um, and that's as easy for the most part if you can't just change the email address, which sometimes you can't um, for one reason or another. Sometimes you can't literally change the email address. You can add yourself the other email as an admin and then once you're added as an admin and you've accepted admin access, you can promote yourself to owner. And then that way you'll switch. So the one email address you want to be the owner will be the owner of the account and the email address that was previously the owner will just be an admin. There you go. That's the, that's the way I've done it in the past for clients. It's just have them add, I'll add them as an admin and then switch it so that they have ownership of the account. Okay. Questions about how many headlines, all of them. So if they give you four headline options, you better put in four. It says up to 15, um, up to 15. If I was doing this for real for Melinda, I would be adding in 15 different headlines. No questions asked. Why? Because you get a lot of variety from Google that way. So if you remember when I searched before about maids and I had that headline at the top, if you give a bunch of different headlines, what Google does is that it customizes the one that a person sees based on what they searched for. 
So this is very useful for you. If you have the ability to do 15, which look at that, it's AI or view ideas. Like you don't even have to come up with all 15 ideas, but it's better to have 15 than it is to have three when you've got 15 options. They, I, no one gives you options that aren't there for a reason. <laughs> so if you got 15 options, use all 15 of them. Please and thank you, okay? Now, a lot of the uh, meat inside of one of these ads is going to be based on the theme. Now, for this little kid, little gem birthday parties, that's obvious. The theme is kids' birthday parties, right? So some of you might have a little bit of a challenge with figuring out what the theme is. Some of you, it's going to be extremely simple. So in the chat for everyone, I want you to tell me if you were going to do an ad for your number one service, not your business, but the number one service you offer, the one that either makes you the most money or the one that you love doing the most, your number one product, your number one service, what would be your theme? So what would be the theme for your ad? I want to know in the chat, what do you guys think your theme is? So what is the keyword phrase? What is the high level theme? Okay, so Cynthia's got computer help. I like that. I like that. Um, I would say, Cynthia, that is a very good one. Computer help, like help with my computer would be another one. If you do IT uh, or tech services for regular people, that'd be great. Uh, oh, Lisa, that's good. So uh, bras for breast surgery. I love that. And I would just cut that and say bras for breast surgery because that is its own thing. Uh, speech to print, reading tutor. Ooh, nice. Okay, so I would just cut off everything else and just say reading tutor um, because the, you want to go high level with your theme. Reading tutor is very specific. It's specific enough. Their tutoring is about reading. <laughs> like you're like pretty specific there. Anti-aging treatment. Anne, can we talk? But no, for real, Anne, I would get more specific. What anti-aging treatment? Why? Because there are so many. If someone in her 40s knows, there's a lot of options. Uh, women's coach, Ashley, what kind of coach? So the reason why I am giving you guys this feedback is because sometimes you can see you guys are going a little bit too big and sometimes you're going a little bit too small. There we go. Micro needling. That's it. So you would want your ad to be about micro needling. Uh, quick and tasty lunch. I love that. Um, you might also, Kushali, if you were going to have uh, if your restaurant is going to be ethnic or, or if it's going to have a special, like if it's going to be a diner, then it should be quick and tasty diner lunch because people like those specific, like specificity. They like to know they're going to get a quick and tasty Italian lunch or Lebanese or like I said, Egyptian, uh, whatever you're going to do to make it specific, quick and tasty soul food lunch, like make it a little bit more specific so that people can know what you're looking at. Wedding venue, that's it. Marius, wedding venue. Perfect. The only thing that you might want to do is add a size descriptor, like big wedding venue, medium wedding venue, small wedding venue, but only because I recently got married and I know all about the sizing being an issue. Uh, so you guys get where we're going here. Some of these digital obituary, that is fantastic. It's very simple. You, adding the word digital, very key, because that tells me we're not talking about regular old like newspaper obituary. You guys are getting the idea here. Your keyword theme is that high level thing that you offer that you are trying to get people's attention for. Now, mind you, like I said, it's going to still be specific. So Belinda could potentially be like, kids party. But that might be too general especially if we're sending people to the birthday party page because a kid's birthday party is not the same thing as a kid's graduation party. They just aren't. They're going to have a different set of people at them. They might be different sizes. Um, one of them may or may not have activities, that sort of thing. And then once you tell it what your key theme is, virtual preschool, Miriam, that's so cool. Um, once you tell them what your theme is, you're going to give them a location. Now, for all of you people who have non-physical businesses, you have services that you're offering, you have um, products that can ship all over the world, the temptation you're going to have here is to make your location everywhere in the United States of America or everywhere in North America <laughs> or everywhere people speak English. <laughs> like You're going to try to make it everywhere. That is a bad idea. Why? Because... I have been doing business advising for literally over a decade. And I can tell you in my actual experience, the vast majority of us as business people 
get the vast majority of our business from people who are within like a hundred miles of us. Even if you are offering digital services, you might get clients like I've had clients in Chicago and Florida, but the vast by far majority of my clientele came from Ohio. Vast. By far. And so by spreading your net too wide in, in location, you're doing the same thing that you would be doing if you spread that link too far by trying to reach out to too many people. You have the ability with any of these ads to simply, essentially duplicate it and switch the location. So if you do offer services in uh, Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana, you can create an ad for Ohio. And then even in that ad, you can do exactly like what this this ad said, where it's like local gym, what is it saying, Highland Heights? You can actually add in the Ohio designation if you do it specific to a location. So you can say here in Ohio, here in Highland Heights, here in wherever the thing is, you can say here in Indiana, or you can get really specific and say, this is for Carmel and this is for... Oh, y'all, I know way more than one suburb in Indiana, but ain't none of them coming to me. And so like, you can get very specific about the different locations, right? Instead of saying one state, you can get really specific if you just are specific about your location. And remember, Google knows who to serve up ads to. So if you do put something location specific in as a headline, no worries, the people who are not in those locations are not going to see that headline. Highland Heights is about the size of a pin. Like it's, <laughs> it's a little, little pin prick on the map. And so the people who are in the area surrounding Highland Heights are going to see it, but they're not necessarily going to see the words Highland Heights. They might just see near you or locally to you, that sort of thing. Okay. So you don't have to worry too, too much about that location being a problem. Uh, yes, you can run multiple ads for multiple locations. You can absolutely, absolutely, and you should. Home staging in, yes. And why have I been there, Rhonda? I've been all over this country and I, I hung out with some friends who lived in that county. Uh, and no, you do not need to use hashtags. You guys are asking really great questions. Are, is SEO more important than ads? So for Mary, this is this is a great question for everyone. Mary's question is, should she focus on making her website better? Or should she do advertising? To me, the answer is make your website better. Why? Because that is essentially, and for all intents and purposes, free versus ads, which are not. And so I highly encourage you to do SEO first. Do a really good website that has really good search optimization and then focus on ads. Because once you get that website right and you do the ad, that's like adding a uh, lighter fluid to a fire that already is lit. And so sometimes people want to pile up some wood and throw, try to like light the fire with ads, like literally try to light the fire with ads. And the better thing to do is to light the fire first, get the fire burning, and then add ads to it. It's the reverse of what you would do in real life, okay? Uh, and no, they do not interact with each other. So you can have horrible SEO on your website, horrible and run ads it, that Google does not care. Like <laughs> they're not gonna, they're not gonna make you fix your website first. If they did, they would never make any money. Uh, so, ever, ever period. No one, no one would, because there's plenty of horrible websites out there. We have all been on them. Uh, so yes, yeah, so you you don't have to have a great website in order to run ads, not at all. Um, yes, and but a lot of, she's saying a lot of SEO companies charge a lot of money, but yes, I also do workshops here with SCORE all about websites. We talk about accessibility. We talk about making your website work for your business, all that. So you can get started with some of the stuff that's just free. Okay. Now we we're talking about money right now. So let's talk about money. When you go to set your ads, it is going to ask you what your budget is. Let me see if I can fast forward us to budget. Oh, and then down here at the bottom, you have an optimization score. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the optimization score on this ad right now is 93%. That just means that there's enough information to help people kind of get where they're trying to go. I'm not going to complete this ad right now because I want to get to the, the next step in the process, which is creating the budget and all that jazz. So it's going to, no, oh, it wants me to fix issues. I'll review. There we go. It actually is giving me a bunch of different options. And this is just based on the fact that it's a kid's birthday party, right? There we go. Add, select. 
Uh, and you see it gave me the option to choose an aspect ratio. It's great. Uh, and then it wants a logo. Let's see if I can, I'll just choose one of the kids' faces and good enough. Okay. So now it's going to let us move forward with the ad creation where it's, you can even see here, it's got the information right there. It's this, this stuff is great. So you can add in your themes. Remember we talked about the different themes. This is where you would put that. You can add in locations. Look at this. It's already got a set of locations based on Highland Heights, y'all. And so we can add in some custom locations um, based on the URL. Like this is just populating it automatically to help you optimize your ads. This is the, this, y'all, I promise you, it's not that hard. This should not be scary. I'm just showing you for your own sake, it can be very, very easy to do. And then once you get to the next step, it's going to ask you, what do you want to bid based on? And you can say, I want to set a target cost per action, meaning that I want to spend less than X amount of money. I want to focus on conversion. So I'm, that's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to set a target, but I am going to set a budget. This, These numbers, 1,080, 900, 700, this is just made up nonsense. I do not want you to even remotely look at these numbers and feel like that's real. So even over here, this is like $740 and $250. Y'all, you don't even have to get even in the ballpark of this. You could set your ads for $10. Like you could set a campaign daily budget of $10. It will say, this is low. Are you sure? And then you can say, yes, ma'am, I am sure. I do not want to spend more than $10 a week on these ads. So you do not have to set your ads at $100 a day. There is essentially, the only minimum is the amount that it would cost for a single click. And cost for click here is for this title for kids' birthday parties as a theme is $8.64 in my area. So I would be competing at $8.64. Now, a conversion is a person who clicks on my ad to come to my website. So that is the goal of the ad is to get someone to click. And when someone does make that click, then that's called a conversion. There are a bunch of other conversion types, Mary. So don't, don't stop there. She could also decide that she wants a click to be, she wants a conversion to be a booking a party. If she wants it to be booking a party, then she needs to have a specific code on this page so that Google can track the performance in the ad of how many people fill out this form. That you are asked, everyone here can do that. This is, this, none of the stuff I'm saying here is, is prohibitive. It's just that you probably shouldn't start at this level. You should start at just trying to get them to click on this page. <laughs> like, just do this first and make sure that on your page, you have your call to action like Belinda does right at the top of the page. So easy to do. It's very, just make sure you have a call to action at the top of the page so that people don't get lost and not know what it is that, they, that you want them to do. Okay. Uh, so is it better to set your location in a small town or in like the generalized, the generalized Bay area? I think it's better to set your location exactly like you saw a second ago where the location is, uh, let me go back to, so that we can get the location. This location is essentially county based. So we have a couple of different counties and a couple of different cities that are relatively speaking adjacent to the area that the ads are being run for. So it is really good to do this, especially if you're going to mention any of these neighborhoods by name. And it's always useful if you live in a place where people are geographically tied to the name of their neighborhood or their city, then you may want to use the names of the neighborhoods or cities in the ads. And that's very useful. Here in uh, Northeast Ohio, plenty of people are very neighborhood affiliated. And so they love that they are Lakewooder or they are a Lindhurst person or whatever the thing is. There's plenty of neighborhoods here. And so if you were going to be running an ad here, you might want to tell people in uh, Beachwood that they should come on over to Highland Heights for this little gym, right? Like that's something that you could do, but it's, it's something you would do at the location level and then make sure that you have that inside of your headlines so that those headlines come up for people in those locations. Okay. Hope that was clear.
Now, like I said, your estimated budget is, when I say estimated, it is a, I will never, Google will never spend more than your budget. So if your budget is $70 for the week, you may see $10.01 spent one day and $9.99 spent the next day. But you're never going to see $10.55 and then $11 and then $12. No, 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 no. The, whatever your budget is, is essentially the cap. So you're not going to see overspending. There's no such thing. Okay. It's just not going to happen. At the end, then you just review your campaign and you decide whether you think the information is accurate, if it's useful before it goes live, just to make sure that you are getting the right information out there. You set up your credit card or your debit card because I'm not really a credit card person. So I run these ads with debit cards. You set that up and then you're ready to roll. Um, it is really, really simple to get started with ads because of the fact that we have this kind of wizard that we're walking through right now. This is essentially the smart ad setup. But if you see here, it says performance max. That is because Google essentially said, we want to take the smart ads that we created for small business owners, and we want to make them have a lot more power. And so they maximize, they kind of merge the uh, one of the biggest ad types that they have with the small business ad type. So now you got a lot of options. Even if you stay in the smart mode, you have a lot of options that you can work with. And big, biggest thing, y'all, do not spend a penny more than you feel comfortable. 100%, what is your comfort level? And that is all. Now back to Shanisha's question. You can run a ton of different ads inside of one ad platform. So you do not need to start different ad platforms. That ad account that I logged in with my email address and all that, you don't have to start multiples of those in order to start a new campaign. You would literally just start a new campaign whenever you were ready to do a new campaign. Now, if we're talking about this birthday party situation and maybe Belinda wants to do um, birthday parties and she also wants to do, let's see, what else are the events? Um, other types of events, like she wants to do whatever the other event categories are. She could do multiple ads. Wait, let me get to the ads. Multiple ads inside of one campaign. So she does not have to have six different campaigns just to talk about parties. She could have a parties campaign where she talks about all the different types of parties. Matter of fact, we saw she's got all those specialty add-ons. And so if she wanted to run different ads for the add-ons, that would be even cooler. So she could get really specific and be like, you can book an ad. You She could create an ad for all the different, I think it was six different types of themes that people can do. That would be amazing. And those are just the different ad types. You don't have to create another campaign for that. That's just all within the same ad type. Once you're ready to move on to doing the kind of fancier stuff, you can kind of switch out of, of, of smart mode into expert mode. But the reality is you don't ever really have to switch. And it's really, it's gotten to the point where now smart mode is expert mode. You guys saw me do a lot of really cool stuff here using the different AI and being able to populate from the link that I gave it. All of that stuff is available to you, regular people on the street. And when I say you, I mean me too, because I'm not special. Like, as you see, I am showing you the inside of my own ad account. This is not special. And it's just exactly what you would have access to if you were going to get started with ads today. Okay, it is eight o'clock. I feel like I have answered just about every question you guys had, but I'm going to go through and make sure that I did. I'm going to stop sharing real quick and go, go through. Now, before I let you guys go, I want to know in the chat, what are you going to do with this information? What are you going to do? What are you, what are you going to do now that you have all of this information? Uh, because this is, this is my payment. Like y'all don't owe me nothing but this information. What you going to do <laughs> in the chat? How are you going to take the information you learned today and do something with it? I see we have a hand raised. Let me see if I can see who that is. I can't really call on people, uh, but you guys can, you can put it in the chat because I can see that there. I don't really have controls to call on people. You don't have to redo it, Shanisha. You can just go reset that plugin. You're good. <laughs> Create your own ad, Marius. That is good. Attempt. That's it. Just attempt an ad. Like, I, you know, you know. Optimize, Patrice, thank you. Get to your website first. That's fine. It's perfectly fine. Do SEO. Uh, but this is good, Lisa. It's fine to prioritize. There's other things. Um, 
Yes. So uh, we have a question about whether or not you can edit ads after they have been launched. Yes, you can. You can edit, you can pause, you can you can do a bunch of th different things. You can delete them or stop them. So if you are running an ad and it's doing too well, like now you're getting too many people clicking on your website, you're getting too many bookings and it's overwhelming, you can actually just shut the ad down or any of the, like any of the above. You can pause it, you can change your budget. So if you're like, oh, I set my budget too low, you can add, or if you set your budget too high, you can lower it. Um, there's no, there's almost nothing you can't do once the ads are created. It's kind of nice. You can also add different images and things like that. Uh, and if you make a mistake, like if you do something weird, um, there's the link is bad or anything like that. Google will actually create a little alert for you inside of the ad platform. And it'll say your ad isn't being delivered because, and then it'll tell you exactly what's going on. So you don't really have to worry. Google is one of the best ad platforms. Again, this is not me advertising for Google. This is me as a person who does this for a living, telling you legit the truth. Google is one of the best ad platforms out there. And that is extremely transparent, meaning you know exactly where all your money is going. You control it. You control every dime that goes into the platform. And if your ad is not being delivered or if your conversions are not working, like it looks like things are, you're getting charged for things that don't make sense. You can pause and then look through everything. You can see when people were clicking, all of that. It's very, very transparent. Okay. Uh, oh, good length of time to run an ad for. That's a really good question. So I would say it really is going to be dependent on what your goal is, like the goal for your business. I am a huge fan of weekly ads, meaning I'm going to run an ad for a week to see what the results are going to be. And then from there, you can scale up. So you can go week, look at the results, and then see what's going on one week or two. And then from there, you can go up to a month or three, like a quarter, right? That would be my advice for kind of scaling up your ads, but you would want to scale up because not because of money, but you want to scale up so that you can get the ad right. Once you get what people are looking for, what the theme is, and you get it connected really well to the landing page that you're sending people to, chef's kiss. But sometimes it takes a minute to get that exact math, like that exact language right. So I would say one or two weeks is pretty much the, the bet. Um, and Okay, so Google ads versus social media ads. Honestly, they serve different purposes. Your social media ads are usually very good for shopping. So if someone is a is shopping, like literally like I want to buy a shirt, um, social media ads are actually pretty good at getting people to buy a shirt. Uh, <laughs> but if you have like a high level service, like maid service, or uh, you probably do not want to use social media ads for conversion to get people to buy things. Now you can use your social media ads to raise brand awareness because sometimes they're inexpensive. Sometimes they're expensive. It depends on because you're competing exactly like you would with Google, you're competing for someone's dollar or for someone's eyeballs with someone else's dollars. And so it's it just depends on what it is you're trying to actually accomplish. Um, you can do, Darren is asking the advanced questions. Uh, can you do A-B testing? Yes, inside of Google Ads, you can do um, audience splits. You can do all sorts of advanced testing and you can set them up once you've set up your ad. So you set up an ad and then you can go back in and set up different tests with that ad. So yeah, you can. Okay, you guys, I'm going to have to let you go. I know you could just sit here and talk all night. <laughs> well, this has been wonderful as usual. We're so happy that you did this. And I'm sure that people have learned a lot. Uh, you, again, you will get a link to the recording and you can view it over and over again till you can get do everything exactly as she's explained it to you. And hopefully you will do that because it will be very useful for you and for your business. So uh, thanks again for uh, to uh, Lindsay for presenting it. And thank you for showing up and uh, being a good audience. <laughs>